All right. Thanks, John. Hey, guys. Uh, welcome, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Um, I work with both Manesh and John, and I think we've put together – hi, John Turpin from Atlanta. I saw you uh, on there a while ago. This uh, this is actually John Bullock. I'm logged in as John Person, Jr. Um, that's the way I had to log into Omnovia tonight, but uh, it's actually John Bullock. And if anyone's in Atlanta, John Turpin runs a great uh, meetup group, so I'll shoot my email address out, and I can con get you in connection with him uh, if anyone's in Atlanta to uh, – be a part of this group but so we have a great webinar for you guys tonight um, we're going to talk about high probability breakout trades both John and Manesh uh, have different indicators that look for these type of trade setups and they're going to spend about 50 minutes each in a presentation teaching you guys some different ways to identify those um, those breakouts and then a lot of people asked if we are going to record it and we are going to record the video and we'll get that sent out to you but um, Tonight should be a great webinar. I hope everyone learns a lot. Um, if you have questions, we'll try to answer them as we go. We've got um, we've got quite a few people in the room here, so we'll we'll try to answer them as go as we go. But I'll go ahead and let John get started. So uh, thanks, John, and I'll let you let you fire away here. Very nice. Welcome everybody, and um, I just think that. Um, We've had a lot of good, uh, it's been kind of an interesting market, and I think we've had a lot of great setups. And, and um, you know, I just did a presentation in, on, uh, which is uh, kind of ironic because I just gave a presentation in Atlanta over the weekend, and uh, a couple of the patterns, and especially we're going to go over them tonight, and the scans that we, we look for. Um, in fact, today, in our, even our own trading room, I'm not sure how many, Ruth, you were there. We talked about McDonald's as a high-closed doji. Uh, Sonia, I know you were in there. Uh, I'm not sure if Diana or Gary was in there. Gina, I know you were there. Uh, today was kind of an interesting day trade day. It's just all been about more of the uh, volatility in stocks rather than volatility in the overall market. But there's some great things that we've done and we look for and we scan for, and we're going to go over that tonight that I think is going to help a lot of people. So um, it is being recorded, number one. Number two, if you are having a sound issue, because we've done all the sound checks and they're all good, do me a favor. Um, you might have too many browsers open. If you have too many uh, platforms which take broadband uh, with uh, from your internet, it will cause intermittent latency problems with your sound. So close out excessive browsers, A, B, close out other programs that you have. Uh, I think Omnovia, I guess unofficially I could call it a memory hog. I'm not sure how that all works, but um, anyway, that's how you can um, uh, get that going. So first and foremost, the irony about uh, in tonight's presentation is that the uh, this um, this presentation was when I had a little darker hair is uh, kind of old and the, the why I think it's iron it uh, ironic is because it's it's got this like one of my favorite patterns the compression uh, pattern but also it's hard to see there's a dot there's a dot a buy signal setup and a momentum indicator which is what this is about tonight and you know Manesh has a very unique uh, uh, methodology that he teaches which does actually is a method that I think uh, you will find useful in the sense that it's uh, something that goes hand in hand with what I'm going to be sharing with you tonight. First and foremost, let's get right going. Uh, we do have a uh, disclaimer, so let's make sure that everyone takes a moment to uh, understand that trading is risky and that past performance is not indicative of future results. And uh, this presentation is copywritten material by me, John L. Person, so it is for your benefit and education only, not to be reproduced and redistributed. All right. So for those that do not know me, um, and I think that there are a lot of people in uh, the audience that are relatively new to um, uh, our room for the first time here, and maybe perhaps Manesh, I just wanted to let you... Uh, if maybe you've seen some of my work in the past and weren't familiar with it, I uh, this book here, I'm proud to say Candlestick and Pivot, Pivot Point Trading Triggers is now a decade old. Um, that really launched uh, the popularity of both pivots and uh, a few candle patterns that I'm going to share with you tonight, which are a part of my repertoire for looking for strong momentum and high probability setups. The book below it, Mastering the Stock Market, that book came out, now I can't believe it's three years this thing came out. Three years ago, we talked about um, how people were struggling. Uh, there's an indicator that I use instead of volume histogram, 
I use OBV, on balance volume. It helps to define the trend of volume. I think a lot of people have been struggling in recent years with volume analysis. Um, market moves up on light volume using volume histogram bars, and it's been causing a lot of individual traders a lot of confusion because most people are taught that, you know, a solid, a good, strong, healthy trend is on rising volume. But you must take note, there's, there's a reason, and I explain it in that book now three years ago, two and a half, three years ago, that book came out, Mastering the Stock Market, which explains the the um, viability and the edge that using a volume trend tool will give you in this day and age because due to the advent and the increase in popularity of dark pools, number one, and options trading. Options trading, a derivative market, people can do a synthetic long position in an options market instead of trading the underlying. Like today, for example, instead of looking at McDonald's, for example, you know, instead of taking McDonald's on a uh, and using the capital of a, at the time, a $94 uh, stock, um, you can do a stock replacements type strategy. Short term, you're looking for what? Maybe a, a high delta in the 70, 80 range. A longer term, 90 days, you might drop that down to maybe a 35, 40 delta. So with that said, just remember, if you do have options traders increasing their uh, activity, instead of trading the underlying market, the volume, the option volume is not going to be translated to the histogram volume of the instrument you're trading. And that's the, that's the relevancy. I, I have the logic behind what I've been teaching people for years. It was covered in that book. Of course, my contribution with the Commodity Traders Almanac was um, a lot of people really enjoyed that and looking at not just commodities because a lot of people say, I don't trade soybeans. I, you know, I, I'm not interested in some of that stuff in cattle and meats. But what we did is we we created the um, the idea and, and, and linked how high correlated stocks are linked to the seasonality of the underlying commodity, and that's what we brought to the table. They did discontinue the Commodity Traders Almanac. The last issue was the 2013 issue. It was one of the best books. I think it was just a great great book, um, one that is still uh, will work because what we put into that book was all types of ETFs and high correlated stocks to the commodity markets. Anyway, some of you might be familiar with my indicator on Thinkorswim, the PPS, and of course, Persons Pivots. Now we have a couple things we're going to teach tonight and how to utilize two patterns that were written 10 years ago that are effective 10 years ago. They're more, if not as effective today, and that's the high and low closed doji scans. So. What I look for, and it really does not exist, so this is kind of a teaser title, is the perfect trading method. I mean, the ability to spot a high probability, meaning it's not going to be perfect, it's not 100%, but it's better than, say, or just under 70%, meaning 7 out of 10 times, if you have a pattern that you see materializes 7 out of 10 trades, you know, if it works, then it's a high probability. What we don't know is what will be the profitability on the outcome. What we do know is, will the um, pattern, the setup, once it gives a trigger, which is a call to action to get long or short or in or out, um, once that trigger is mechanized, then do you have an, an ability of understanding where to place a stop loss? So one thing is identifying a setup, knowing what the trigger is, and then having a defined risk. Um, and then again, when you have that high probability set up, you know, having an idea of a specific entry level, not just based on price, but also time. And time is important, and I'm not talking about time of day. I'm talking about time condition. Is it on the open of the market or the close of the market? That's very important because if you're looking at a daily chart, obviously if the market's near the close, you can either buy on the close or buy on the next session's open. If it's a Friday, for example, and you're trading off a weekly chart, you know it's real simple. If you have a trigger that says buy on the close or the next session's open, you can kind of control your entry by looking at the next, very next session's open. So daily, weekly conditions, that's what I mean by time condition is open close. Not at 4.33 and 17 seconds get in. I'm talking about based on the open and the close. And then again, what's really important is bullet point number three, knowing the expected time frame that, that you see expected results. Meaning, if I have a pattern, I mean, think how helpful would this be to say, if I've got a pattern, I should see results within two time periods. 
So if I have a five minute chart, I should see on a five minute chart within two bars, which is 10 minutes. If I have a daily chart, I should see expected um, at least some type of results that if I'm in a bullish pattern, I should see what? Expected bullish outcome, meaning higher highs, higher lows, or a profitable trade within two bars, right? Two bars on a daily chart is two days. If it's a weekly time frame, then I should see expected results or at least positive performance within two weeks, so forth and so forth. And that's what I mean by the time frame to see expected results. So setting initial profit targets for scale outs is important. And of course, understanding price levels to trail stops. If we can nail down those five bullet points, there's one missing that's also important, number six. Number six isn't about the breakouts, it's more about trade management and position sizing. You know, there's an old adage, whenever you're right, you're always in one, whenever you're wrong, you're always in a hundred. That's an old Lord Trader's adage that we used to joke around about, but you know, it's, it's, it's true. Most people, they get that gut feeling and they get into more positions than they should and then when the trade doesn't work, they're, of course, you know, behind the eight ball, so to speak. So position sizing is a very, being, uh, having the ability to be disciplined and having a stagnant amount of orders per your equity is very important. Money management technique, very critical to this business. So let's get right to the point. Many of you, if you've seen me before, listen, this is kind of a, a very intriguing situation because we are seeing this pattern perform immensely across a spectrum of various markets still, and especially in the U.S. equity markets. Now, we've had a tremendous run so far. Um, you know, if we turn the clocks back, back at the end of January, the 1st of February, there wasn't a soul in this world who was, well, maybe there's a few people like ourselves that were bullish the market, but everyone was bearish this market. And this, you know, I'm talking, referring to the U.S. equity markets. Most analysts, the media, the news, everywhere you turned, it was getting ready to crash. And the funny thing is, is that we saw this pattern that I disclosed and wrote about, published over a decade ago, called the bullish high close doji setup. And I, I dub that the HCD. So if you've ever seen my tweets or if you've seen anything that I've put out and I say, hey guys, we've got a bullish HCD on the horizon or we have a bullish HCD pattern, there's specific rules. And the rules are after a downtrend, when a doji forms, it's kind of in the family and the kind of concept of a morning doji star formation, which is a three candle formation. And it's very bullish. The problem is, I never really saw that pattern materialize. Being a trader, I want the most aggressive bullish patterns. If I'm bullish, I'm looking and scanning for those. But what most people don't realize is clearly you can see what a doji is. It's where the market just about closes right about where it opens. So for new traders who are not familiar with what doji is, it's a candlestick that after forming a range, a high and a low, market opens, it goes up, it goes down, or it opens, it goes down, it goes up, and it comes back and closes right at almost exactly where it began. What the, what the trigger is, the setup is after a downtrend, keyword, after a downtrend or after a pause in the market, we see a doji formation within a few bars, there's specific rules there, but let's just keep our eye on the prize here and keep focused on this. We want to see them within the next few bars, we want to see the market close above the high of that candlestick. So if you notice, that's what the dash line represents. The dash line represents the level of the high of that candle. When we get that, that's the call to action. That's the actual trigger. You're buying on the close or the next sessions, it's synonymous, next sessions open. Now, we have the trigger. We have the setup, which is the pattern, the doji, after a downtrend. The trigger is when the market closes above the open. So what is the risk? The risk is your stop loss goes underneath the lowest low or the doji of the past prior four bars. Those are my rules, okay? Now, the opposite is true for the bearish low close doji. But I want to focus on the high close doji. A couple things happened and I want to go back. And this is kind of recent history and we got some really neat stuff to share with you tonight. I think this is going to be really instrumental because it's not just 
about price. The high and low close doji are probably the most powerful and most frequent and high probable patterns that I've seen come across my desk in 35 years of trading. That's why my story doesn't really change. My teaching doesn't change. I haven't switched to methodology. There's really nothing new to teach people because it's still working to this day. I have certain things that I like to share with people that help give us an edge on the condition in which we look for the high or the low closed OG, which would be maybe some volume, some seasonal analysis, and I'm going to share that with you right now. Okay? So basically what we're doing is we're going to go back, and if you remember back on February 2nd, one of the things that we talked about was for people to buy some Feb Spider 207 calls and the IWM 120 calls because we were bullish in the market down there. At the time, they had 30 deltas. Many of you might argue with, hey, why is he buying a 30 delta? Well, if I'm expecting a very bullish move and an immediate price increase, a 30 delta on an increase in an underlying market of, say, 3 to 5%, a 30 delta is going to change pretty quickly. So there is a time, a rhyme, and a reason to buy out of the money options within specific patterns. And the high closed doji and the low closed doji are two of those instances. If I'm expecting immediate results, then I don't have a long time to wait. I know that if I'm going to be right, I should be right almost immediately, not I have to wait around and watch theta decay. And I certainly, if I'm looking for an immediate move, an immediate breakout, okay, one of the next things that I don't have to worry about is putting on a vertical call spread because I'm not going to be sitting there waiting till expiration till the results come around. I want to see immediate results within two candle bars. All right? That's the key. So that's why we actually have created daily and intraday scans for this stuff. One of the things that we did is we noted here, and I want to share this with you, on or about from January 30th through February 3rd, we picked up scans in a, uh, for high closed OGs in a multitude of diverse sectors and different stocks. Funny thing is we had Charles Schwab, Regents Financial, in a, a, a regional bank. SMH, which is an exchange traded fund on the semiconductor. So it wasn't just on an individual stock, it was on an ETF where a sector itself formed a high closed OG. Cognizant, Red Hat, Akamai Technologies, Industrials, GE, Best Buy, Ford, Owings, Illinois in the material sector. Two that were very popular that I focused my attention on that I want to share with you tonight was not as the world, and you go back and think down memory lane, and I'll share with you about this too, but there was, remember in crude oil, everyone was, you know, by the time January came rolling around, everyone thought that crude oil was going to go to 20, 30, you know, it was going to keep going lower. Well, the funny thing is, is that in the middle of January, we actually put this on our blog site. We posted this. We taught about it. We screamed from the highest mountain here in Florida. That's an inside joke. There are no mountains here. But maybe um, the parking lot, at least. We had the OIH and the XOP, two energy sectors, generating high closed OGs, the sector itself. ConocoPhillips COP, a position that we took long. Uh, RDC, in the media, XTC, these are what's highlighted in green, by the way, are not just stocks, they're ETFs. Now, here's another one which was very interesting, was in the home builder sector. Now, some of you, I'm not sure if you're uh, trade station users, but every Thursday I do this. Um, I know we were promoting looking at ITV and all the home uh, housing sector stocks like Toll Brothers, Lennar, Pulte, even KBH, K KB Homes. Um, I, I think uh, D.H. Horton is another one. Um, home builders, the actual ETF on home builders, the ITV generated a high closed OG. That's very powerful. Retail apparel, like for example, um, limited brands, which is Victoria's Secrets, TJ Maxx back then, and Ann Taylor. In fact, ANF, I put out a free tweet, and the next day, it had a daily high closed doji. Hey, guys, look for an immediate reaction. The next morning, it opened up a little lower, and at the end of the day, it was up 5%, a nice 5% move. So, I mean, these are kind of some really neat stuff that I think that's happening in the market right now. It's happening even today, and I'll share with you what even tomorrow looks like because um, we've already done our homework for tomorrow.
So this is very easy to learn. We've had a huge success using it. And I think that this event tonight promises to give you some very powerful insights that I know that you're going to be able to apply immediately. And I'm going to walk you through this entire session and go over the details. So I'll be providing you some information as well on how you can receive some follow-up training if you're interested directly from the originator and the true master, which is me. So I know that you're going to have a great event tonight. So this is Ann Taylor. This is, um, excuse me, this is uh, Ann Abercrombie and Fitch, a and F. This was the stock that we put out that buy recommendation just to show the results. This is on a 60-minute chart. What you're looking here is a candlestick chart. It's a 60-minute chart, intraday. When you see an orange candle, what that signifies if you notice three bars to the left, there's a doji. Note the high of the doji. The market closed above that high of the doji, triggering the call to action. Now, we want to see within two bars. Within two bars, we want to see some positive action. What's positive? Well, we made higher highs, and we still contained between the low there. We made higher highs. We started to see a little bit of nervousness, but by the third bar, right on cue, it had follow through. What you're looking in the middle is a um, histogram. It's a momentum histogram. It tells us, it gives us advanced warning whether or not the market is coming into an overbought territory, number one. Number two, it tells us if we're getting convergence. So as you see, price is making newer lows. Note that the indicator is making higher lows. And all of a sudden, you'll see that the indicator has turned green. But that's not the real issue or confirming indicator. It's this thing down here. It's called on balance volume and everyone has access to using this tool. If you've been struggling with volume as an indicator using volume histogram, may I introduce you to how to use on balance volume to help determine trend of volume. As you can note here, we are seeing as the market starting to move up we're starting to see the volume come into the market trending higher. So that tells us that there is positive momentum. The breakout, the trigger, the call to action is the high closed doji. Now, what's interesting about that is that the retail apparel sector formed a daily. Now, this is pretty wicked. Don't get me wrong. This has um, a great pattern. It's a high probability, but the neat thing about it is instead of using it to trade, because in this situation, the risk, if you buy on the close or the next session's open, your risk is below the low of the doji or the lowest low of the last four bars, which is the doji in this case. So with that said, the sector itself had bottomed out. The sector itself had bottomed out and was generating a positive momentum. Now, this is the weekly chart. This was a daily chart. This is a weekly chart. So if you note, the weekly is positive, the daily is positive, and now we're in multiple time frames that are giving us true trend direction. So what I like to look at, and I wanted to point out to you, this is Ann Taylor here, strong volume. If you take a look at the OBV as price isn't moving higher, if uh, you take a look at this, you will see this blue line is making higher highs and higher lows before the trend of prices broke out. The market actually was making a higher high showing accumulation in this stock before price broke out. The real trigger came right here. If you notice what the date is, this is not 1936. This is just four weeks ago, three weeks ago, actually a high closed doji. So we had a seasonally strong sector, we had the same sector, we had volume indicator, we had like or kind stocks all joining in, forming literally at the almost the same day, the same type of pattern. This is limited brands, literally folks, different company, same pattern, limited brands, the same story, high closed doji. Now, well, this is a stock that I think is very interesting because here we have something that's totally off the rack, not even close to the same sector. But one of the things that's, that we see is 
as we are looking for the stock market on, if you remember, back in late January, exactly Friday, January 30th, the stock market closed lower. And on February, Monday, on February 2nd, when it opened up, it was a little scary. But we were at the bottom of a trading range in the S&Ps, and numerous stocks were not conforming to the overall sector's weakness. A lot of stocks were actually generating, and this is TradeStation, and what we've done is color-coded the high-closed doji. Blue is doji, orange is a high-closed doji. This stock is on a the breakout of a momentum move, and again, what is the common denominator with just a few charts I've shown you? The common denominator is that it seems to be moving with a rise in the on balance volume indicator. Just remember that. Very important point. But what's also a common denominator, this is the weekly chart. All right? This is the weekly chart which reflects the market was already in a weekly buy mode. So when you take a look at the fact that the market was in a buy mode at the end of February, the 23rd, three days later, or basically the next few days, we had the market generate a daily high closed doji while the weekly was in buy mode. So the key element is the volume starts to rise. We see a very positive momentum, high probability pattern ensue. By the way, this is a screenshot today. This is our, our my trade station page. And what I wanted to share with you today in our trading room, and exactly I think it was 10.38 this morning, Eastern Standard Time, I put out and started going all through our high closed doji list and said, gee, McDonald's, it's in that. I had no idea that McDonald's would move that much today. But we did announce we had a daily high closed doji and that the stock was due for a major pop. Remember what I did tell you about the common denominator between all the last few examples? Look at the on balance volume. The volume is on the rise. Notice the weekly. See that little dot? Many of you that are familiar with our um, indicator, which is very popular on Thinkorswim. It's called the PPS. It's a momentum indicator. It gives definitive buy and sell signals. In fact, they show up as arrows. As you can see here, that little blue arrow showed McDonald's actually four weeks ago. The same time frame, the end of January, generated a buy signal. So while the world thought the stock market was going to crash, McDonald's starts generating silently a little buy signal. And note the volume, the coincidence of the volume. The funny thing is, note here, I've just done this for your benefit. This is the volume histogram below, and this is the on balance volume indicator. Volume below, I don't know what that's telling people, but I'll tell you what it, it might do is scare people out of trades versus look at the definitive trend in the volume with the on balance volume. You can see that clearly it's on a higher rising trend. It does have a moving average component, which I've overlaid, which helps to define the fact if the average daily volume is on the increase or on the decrease. Volume histogram, and we had one of the gentlemen in the, in the um, uh, session tonight said he loves synthetics. Now keep this in mind. If I did a few of these, like say, longer term options, call options, directional, because I'm looking for results in the next day or two, and I want to maybe ride this trend up, perhaps maybe thinking it's going to get to 100, 105 by maybe June, okay? If let's su give that supposition just out of curiosity. If I put on, instead of buying a stock at 95 bucks, right? If I went with a synthetic or just a directional long position, is that volume that I bought call options going to reflect in the underlying volume of this stock? And the answer is absolutely not. And so therefore, my theory that I've been explaining to people for years now is that it's not going to be reflected in the volume levels. 
And so you can clearly see the divergence between the weekly volume, which is the middle chart right here. You can see the histograms on average are moving lower. Where you can see the yellow line, which is the on balance volume, moving higher. This gives confirmation that there's more accumulation of positive buying, not negative selling. So this is on an intraday basis. This was exactly 1048, this 1038 this morning when we were talking about it on an intraday basis. And the funny thing is, look at the coincident factor here. Even though my momentum indicator is positive, let's talk about that later. I want you to take a look at the direction of the on balance volume. It's pointing up. Now, on an intraday basis, I'm not sure what the volume's pointing to here, but it's not until about 1 o'clock that you finally get an uptick in the volume. So for once, we've got a, a, a kind of a matchup between the volume coming into McDonald's, and it really started to pick up as the market started to break out at approximately, as you can see here, this two, right at 2 o'clock, the 2 o'clock bar. That's when we saw a high volume bar. But the volume and the trigger literally came on the yesterday's close. It was a high close doji. And this is the probably um, the pattern that I like to see is an accumulation type of uh, coincident factor between not just the price moving up, but also with the on balance volume in concert. Not only that, but there's a third element. The weekly is already in a buy mode. So if the higher degree time frame's in a buy mode and you get a pullback on a short term basis, and so this was the short term basis pullback. Everyone can see that, right? Weekly went up, it pulled back to the weekly moving average, and something happened here to get an explosion to the upside. What was the pattern? It was the high closed doji. That was the intraday pitcher taking a snapshot dissecting this market. So obviously there is a um, something out there with the high and the low closed doji still in effect and ways to improve on it. And that's what I am sharing with you tonight. There are things that we do to try to improve on that. Now, um, we have the high closed, low closed doji scan. Um, and there's a couple things that we, again, want to look for going into uh, tomorrow, by the way, all right, and let me go back, I'm going to change this, so this is just to share with you, let's go with uh, Mickey D here real quick so you can kind of see this, um, I'm going to expand this up and let me go to format analysis techniques, let me turn this volume back on, okay, so here's what I'm kind of sharing with everybody here real quick. Um, while this, everyone could, you can kind of see this volume. I mean, the trend is really not doing anything. I don't, I mean, what do you think? Is that an accurate depiction? Uh, you know, the average takeout one, two, that, those three bars. But that's a, that's the average trend of the volume. Would you agree with that? That's the, I mean, the trend is, is sloping downward. It's certainly not sloping upward, right? Would everyone agree with that? And there's a clean, clear divergence between that yellow line. I mean, this thing is forming, as you can see, and it might be easier if I uh, do something else here real quick. I hope I don't disrupt the, qu the quality. Everything's running smoothly. There's no technical difficulties here. Um, I'm just going to use this other... Uh, feature here. Just give this a second. It's a great little drawing tool and it's going to allow me to do some things to point things out to you that I think are instrumental. Number one, you can start to see this yellow line forming almost the bullish pattern within itself. Is this not forming higher highs and higher lows, right? And it's trending up. This is just, I don't know what this is doing. It's just it's there. It's not giving you an edge in the market. All of a sudden, we get a high closed doji. And one of the things that I talked about in the trading room today, instead of I should have just grabbed everybody by the throat and said, McDonald's, get in it this second. 
but I was I posted it in the room McDonald's and I went on a little bit of tangent about you know, it could be the surprise the attack, a yada, yada, yada. But, boy, I'll tell you what, if you're looking for a move with one, you know, this was a very strong surprise to the upside. Um, this, we are seeing these kind of moves, but the coincident factor, the coincident factor, once again, I think is, is the, 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 the series of other factors that are uh, related to this analysis and that's in the sense that number one we have had a buy signal and that buy signal just so that you can see review data window here so let me get this so that you can see was generated on the week ending February 6 okay now when I talk about uh, the stock market and I just wanted and I probably should have just started off with this immediately okay is that everyone and when we go back down memory lane and you go back memory lane it's it's tough to remember things after you know three days I don't even remember if I what I had for dinner two nights ago but back on as you can clearly see this was a, a situation where and it, it has been in the last couple days kind of a, a an interesting trade but boy on February 2nd that was February 2nd, that Monday. That was January 30th. On January 30th, I mean, there was narrowly a soul that would say this is in a, uh, this market, a lot of people thought this thing was going to crash and burn. It was, it looked a little ugly there. We had a lot of the volatility and a lot of people were looking for follow through and they were looking for the market to move down. The kind of funny thing is, is that when the market did uh, move down on January 30th, we didn't have a breakdown in my advanced decline and we did not have a new breakdown in the volume we were in a trading range and my famous last words and we have some experienced witnesses here just to, to make sure I didn't get forgetful I said folks we're in a trading range and in a trading range you do not sell you look for buy signals and you look for buy setups so we have some definitive trading tools the volume analysis is one and just to be uh, you know just out of curiosity, uh, we'll we'll take a look at adding. Let me go over here to insert analysis technique real quick. I'm probably overstepping the boundaries of getting into um, too much right now, but I wanted to share with you uh, as far as changing settings and stuff like that. That's a very risky. That's a a, a very low probability trade. And a live presentations is starting to change settings on on the computer uh, it, it, it Murphy's law kind of comes into play sometimes and uh, we break things um, <laughs> that's hopefully understand my sense of humor uh, I probably should just stay on subject and not change but what I wanted to share with you is you know we have a volume the histogram here on the S&P 500 that quite frankly when the when the trend of the market is up the volume is down and you can see it from this this low to this high right and the on balance volume moves up as the market moves down the volume goes up but on balance volume doesn't move down that much Do you see what I'm referring to there was greater volume in the histogram reflecting more selling pressure which is a false it was a false and not an accurate depiction there are two distinct um, differences when you examine this, and that's what I wanted to share with you, two distinct differences between the volume histogram and the on-balance volume. And so with that said, I think that's what's kind of been tricking a lot of traders. So when I when I come in tonight and I say, hey guys, I really, I really think it's important and imperative that if you even said, oh, I've taken, I've seen his, I bought his book, well, go whip out that book again. I think it's page 214 or 216 on candlesticks pivot point trading triggers on the high closed doji and the rules and go review those bullet points because they're if not as effective as I wrote about them over a decade ago as they are even right now today so they're very they're very um, consistent accurate and highly effective this is my 35th anniversary year of active trading I first started back uh, working for George Lane who 
as many of you know, created the indicator known as stochastics. Um, I started working with Uncle George in 1980. Now, one of the things that I've noticed, even back in those days, that we used to look for John, we lost you on the audio, if you can hear me. Thanks, Terry. Hey, uh, John, if you can hear me, we lost you on audio. All right, how about now? Are we doing better? Yeah, we got you now, thanks. We got you. Right, well, I see. I gave too much credit. It was my fault for going onto a live chart. But anyway, what I wanted to say is back in the 80s, I used to look for changes. Um, the point being is, I think the picture will speak about the words. Folks, this is crude oil, okay? By the way, crude oil generated a high closed doji. Again, a different market. It's got nothing to do with limited brands. It's got nothing. Crude oil really doesn't have a whole lot to do with McDonald's today. Notice the sequence of events rise in OBV, nice high closed doji trigger. This was crude oil. While the world was thinking that crude oil was going down, the funny thing is, and, and how does that relate to this page? Because I think it's very important that we look at some of the cash markets and we look at some of the stocks in the cash market. Back in the day, I used to look at the Dow Jones Utility Index. Back in the day means back in, I think, 1984. We used to look for changes in the Dow Jones Utility Index for a directional edge in bond prices, by the way. So utility stocks would actually lead the way they were a leading indicator for bond prices. So, and, and it's still, by the way, that's the technique, it still works to this day. Um, and we normally had a, a, a week to 10 day lead time. Um, and that's why I included that information in that Commodity Traders Almanac book. So, in any event, looking at crude oil, one of the things that you'll notice here, this is the XOP, and I was pretty hell-bent on buying the XOP. We actually put this in. Um, if you go to our website, uh, personsplanet.com, uh, many of you are familiar with the website. But, you know, later today or tomorrow, whenever you get a chance, if you want, there's a blog. If you click on this blog, and what we did is we put out a lot of really neat information. We've done it for weeks. Uh, in fact, I think it's probably under... January, uh, under January for the week beginning the 26th even, um, a kind of a, it was so important, look at this, OIH generated a weekly HCD bullish pattern, this comes out every Monday morning, alright, XOP closed positive 2 on the week, um, Q's generated a weekly HCD pattern, so I mean this was pretty accurate, timely information back and read that stuff uh, on your own time. It's not password protected and we put that information out um, just as you see it here. So with that said, I want to go through some of the stocks because while the world, this is the joke on humanity, I think, if, we're, if we can teach and learn how to be our own analyst and I can teach you what to look for, I think you're going to become better traders and have better faith in yourself and show more consistency. While the world was bearish on crude oil, people weren't paying attention to names like Phillips 66, which bounced right off monthly pivot support, a rise on volume, we had a PPS buy signal, and it wasn't until the 28th that crude oil bottomed. So the stocks were already on the rise. This is Valero Energy, same thing. Buy signal ensues, rise in volume, and it wasn't until approximately a week later that crude oil bottoms out. The Sorrel, the same thing. It bottoms out literally a week and a half before crude oil bottoms out. So the stocks actually led crude up first. This is just Baker Hughes, another example of how the entire sector bottomed out in the 
middle of January, literally between a week to 10 days before crude oil prices. So the buy signal, the PPF buy signal showed up on scans, the high closed doji. This is kind of a quasi doji right there. It's quasi because it's not an official doji. It didn't close exactly at the open, but I have a specific rule for uh, a doji creation. Um, if the close is within a certain percentage of the overall range relative to the open, we call it a doji because sometimes, you know, within a penny or two or three cents or four cents on a stock, I mean, that's just, you know, a settlement. It, it's, it's pretty darn close to what the doji represents. This is Schlumberger. Now, there's no price missing. It gap lower. This is a, a gap in prices. But needless to say, remember, I started off by saying, if I'm going to get bullish on a stock, I want to see like or similar patterns on stocks in the group because institutions don't tend to buy one stock, they tend to migrate towards the whole sector. And so on one day you'll find many stocks going up and on another day you'll see more follow through as they add to the position and buy like and kind stocks within that sector. All right, And I know you've seen that before, you don't just see one or two names go up. You see the entire sector get up, lit, lit like a, a little Christmas tree. Any event, Conical Phillips, this was the trade that we decided to make. It had great outstanding volume. We had a profit objective in mind. We thought this market would minimum objective get up to that 67 and a half area. We had a gap in the market. We had person pivot resistance. But it was a great little trade that we take just to demonstrate, okay, some of these other names have taken off, but we have another volume and another PPS buy signal. We have another bottoming action in the market. This is an excellent or big trade, and it turned out to be nice for all of them. Similar situation, different event. This was Starbucks, which was another one we tweeted out. Starbucks, right before earnings, had this nice wedge formation. One of my favorite little patterns that I like to look at. In fact, McDonald's on a, if you look at McDonald's monthly chart, I'll go back. I'm not saying it's going to be a wedge formation because if it is, um, boy, I'll tell you what, that's going to be something special. Let's take a look together real quick. I mean, can you imagine? It, I mean, is this just a trading range or is this an eventual longer term when? I don't know. Maybe in my lifetime, McDonald's could run up to 140. I mean, who's to say it can't, right? Um, Chipotle Mexican Grill charges eight bucks or more now for a burrito. They put beans and rice in it. Why can't McDonald's? I don't know. Capitalization, whatever. But I'll tell you what, we actually went, uh, at the very least, just to study this chart together. One of the things that we've talked about on the uh, and today, based on the, the market, is not only was it in a monthly buy, it's been in a, uh, a weekly buy, it's been in a monthly buy signal. And look at the pullbacks. They are met with aggressive buying. You can see it as these tails reveal buy signals. It was just a matter of being in the right place at the right time, having the scan to show that. It's just a matter of the market popping. In any event, that is a kind of a, a little wedge formation that, who knows, I mean, it, it's something worth following to see if there's an accumulation of buy-in in in the market over time. But that wedge formation is one of my favorite patterns that I like as a continuation. But one of the neat things is you can clearly see over here the, and if you can't, you can see the blue arrow right there. That's a PPS buy signal three days before the market triggers. And as you can see, the volume starts to rise. So you had an increase in volume according to the OBV indicator, and then of course that market blasted off. Um, we got out; they were daily options. Um, they were daily because we bought them on Thursday. They expired Friday. They were weekly options. They had one day to expiration for earnings. We bought the 85 because the measurement technique that we used demonstrated that this stock could get up between 88 and 90 which if you watch Starbucks, it not only has finally met that objective, it's exceeded that objective. Needless to say, um, 
this this type of analysis using these patterns, this momentum indicator gives you defined entry, defined stops, and combined with a couple other nuances that we like to incorporate to improve our edge in the market. It's just a matter of scanning and seeing if the criteria is met for better results and more consistent results. Now, if you're interested in learning more about this, here's how I can help you. First off, if you have an account on TradeStation, then person's pivots are free on the App Store. If you have Thinkorswim, both person's pivots as well as my PPS buy and sell indicator arrows are available for all clients on Thinkorswim. Tonight, I have a very special offer. And I think, to be honest with you, this should be mandatory required study material for all traders that are interested in improving their results, interested in using my work, and going forward. So what I have is a four and a half hour straight to the point information study course which covers these excellent points. What exactly my PPS buy and sell triggers are and how they utilize the moving averages. There are also, as I explained in this study course, how to run scans. I also talk about the exact handle patterns, both the high close and low close those. Next, we have person's pivots, which help define the trend, which we didn't even get into tonight, and also how we utilize that to determine the trend direction of the market. And also as a confirming indicator in itself. Remember, there's a hidden moving average component which filters out those bot, uh, support and resistance levels which give buy and sell signals. We have a program for daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, and option expiration, especially using TOS. This course talks distinctly about my favorite chart pattern and the ways to trade the wedge with my last conditional change component which is something else that's incredibly important and, and, and just, I mean, something extremely instrumental. The last conditional change we didn't get into tonight, I'll show in just a second, but that was introduced 10 years ago as well in what I call one of the, at least the book that's going to stand the test of time that they have so far in the most volatile market environment. I mean, the last decade has been pretty wild and crazy. As Steve Martin said, wild, Steve Martin, wild, crazy guy, Saturday Night Live, candlestick and trading, pivot point trading trigger. But we also get into relative strength analysis, which is spreads, breadth analysis for stock indices. And what do I mean by this last additional change? I don't want to keep you in suspense, but this trading course is four and a half hours. And tonight, you get half this study course, which is really great because it's not just 229. But it also comes with a follow-up mentoring session that we do online. This is McDonald's, by the way. All right? This is the intraday chart. And what you're looking at, if you look at this white line right there, and you look at these subsequent white lines as the trend evolves, these are what's known as the last additional change candle. What happens is when you get a buy signal, which there was generated a buy signal, if you didn't notice the high close doji on the end of day that you would notice the high close doji pattern on an intraday basis. But if you go long, this last additional change teaches you or shows you emphatically where your stop should go beneath that white line. We teach how that white line is generated and what it means. You'll notice that we've just been able to program this on trade station as an indicator you'll notice that there's a gray line. The gray line is what we call the bearish LCC. So if the market is going to give a sell signal, which is that arrow, which defines that, at least for the intraday basis, the trend is ended, okay? And once it closes, if you were trailing your stop as a day trader, you'd be stopped out right there. If you wanted to go counter trend and trade the short side, you would be selling the market and placing your stop above that gray line. This is the last additional change candle. By the way, today was kind of an interesting day trade. This whole day trading mini S&P week has been a 
increased in volatility, something that we predicted we don't want, and I will not put out those predictions for all the students in the room tonight. I'm not going to ever do that again uh, because it's just for day trading. It, it's just it's horrible. Um, but anyway, looking at momentum and looking at defining the uh, last additional change and how it works for day traders, if the market generates a buy signal and the market starts to move up, it gives you definitive levels of where you can place your stop. And then if the market takes out that last additional change, then you get a sell signal. You know that you can place and go short the market and place your stops above those gray levels, okay? Or scale out and take profits. But that's the last additional change. Just to let you know how relevant it is and important it is, it's been programmed as an indicator. That's how important and valuable it is. But if you're not familiar with this, it's taught in this trading course. I also have a new mechanical trading strategy system. If you know about the PPS and if you know about my last additional change, great. You want to have an incredibly new mechanical trading system which defines what to look for, which comes up an awful lot. We have our PPS breakout system strategy and it gives instructions for placing your entry orders, your stops, setting profit objectives, scale outs, trailing stops, plus it gives my method for options trades, selecting the right strikes and the right expiration dates. And I go through a nice, incredibly detailed outline specific to options and option trading for a directional strategy. So that combined, if you wanted to buy both packages, you can get both the bundle package. Purchase both courses for $4.95. It comes complete with trading the PPS indicator combined with versus pivots, my PPS breakout strategy, and next of all, we have a one-hour online Q&A mentoring session with access to the recording. So you study the material, you get together, and guess what? We're going to answer questions and go over the material one-on-one. -on -one. This is approximately, this is not a short-term program. This is approximately, I believe, a total of close to seven hours combined of education with no-nonsense, straight-to-the-point information. Buy here, sell there, here's what to do, here's what this is, here's how this works. You can also, as a special invite, come in and join our trading group for two weeks and see how we put this all together. What's special about that? Well, it includes our Monday planning and scanning session with my weekly observation newsletter. So that would be distinct for looking at, for example, even my weekly thoughts, which are posted on the blog, but I just wanted to share with you, it comes complete with, here's our bullish stocks for the week that we're looking at. Almost every single stock this week's for bullish setups are working. Next, we come up with, this is the trade that's giving me, just was enacted, it's giving me a little bit difficulty, but didn't have time to talk about it tonight, biotech. Biotech, the IBB, by the way, <laughs> That's the time, Bill. The IBB is uh, in, enters just to let you know seasonally weak period of time. Another one is uh, Sherwin Williams. This stock is not just parabolic, but it enters a seasonally weak period in March. We're looking for resistance for triggers to sell short between 287 and 305, and it's in that zone right now. We also, for commodity traders, list all these spread trades, which have done marvelous. I mean, incredible. But anyway. We invite you, the uh, uh, weekly observation includes something anyone can get anywhere in the reports, but it's all nice to have it on one sheet for the week. You know what earnings are coming out, you know what economic reports are coming out, and, and that, for example, tomorrow, Herbal Life after the bell, you've got the uh, calls, fears. Uh, so you have all that information so that you have a way to plan the week. Also, we talk about, hey, here's crude oil to consolidation. Here's what we need to do to break out. Gold also, by the way, we're leery of selling. We can tell people we're not getting short near 1195. That's the monthly person's pivot support. Any event, 
So that's all great information there, and that's what's covered in our Monday planning and scanning weekly observation. If you're interested in that information, please go over and you can click on this link, Persons Pivot, PersonsPlanet.com, Pivots, it'll give you that information right there. More importantly, for those that are interested, you go over to, and you can choose the bundle package, both courses. This is the information that tells you what you get, or you can buy it separately depending on your level of interest, what you want. Either way, it's incredible information. We put out some really solid trade information backed by what I like to tell people is trade by the facts and the facts of the tools and the techniques that we have to utilize. With that said, that concludes tonight's session. I wanted to say thank you all very much. We have a wonderful presenter and a great speaker with a, a lot of experience. His name's Manesh Patel. And so, therefore, let's, uh, if you're interested in, in further uh, information on uh, this presentation, just remember it was recorded, and we will have that out for you guys uh, sometime tomorrow. So, anyway, thank you all very much. Definitely, I would take, like I said, this information should be mandatory reading. I don't think a lot of people have had access to this much detail before. It is something that everyone should take advantage of. With that said, I'll leave you to our next guest. Thank you all very much. Have a great evening. Thank you.